Folks, let me ask you a question. Let's say you're driving your crossover or your SUV and you go through a mountain pass, you go around a corner and you're tipping around and feeling rather unathletic. Well, there are very few things you can do if you want to maintain a lot of cargo space, utility, capability, and a good ski vehicle, unless you get something like, oh, I don't know, this 2023 Volvo V60 Cross Country B5 All-Wheel Drive Ultimate. <sighs> This is the very top of the line for what is essentially an entry-level wagon from Volvo. And in this video, I'm going to talk to you about it because there aren't that many auto manufacturers in the United States that still build wagons. There's some magic numbers here. 247 horsepower, 258 pound-feet of torque. This is the baby Volvo engine. It's a two-liter, four-cylinder, and it's turbocharged. It doesn't have any of the other options on it like, oh, I don't know, a supercharger. Just that, but it does have a mild 48 volt hybrid system. As such, this pretty powerful unit actually produces decent gas mileage, 26 miles per gallon combined. Now it goes through an eight speed automatic transmission to a very good all wheel drive system. And that all wheel drive system in the snow is quite good at sending torque to the rear wheels when needed. Otherwise, feels like a front wheel drive car. Alrighty, so it's not that easy to deactivate traction control. In fact, I'm having a hard time doing it in this car. But I wanted to show you the all-wheel drive system. I'm actually on a hill that's covered in snow and ice. And I'm going to give it full acceleration. And you're going to see this thing pretty much just take off. Alright, so I'm going to rev it. 2,000 RPM. And there it goes. So what happened was traction control kicked in, it killed all the fun, the engine's like, done! And then it decided, okay, I'm going to go to a different setting and let you take off, and that's exactly what it did. For auction right now over at tflbids.com is the 2002 Chevy Corvette with the infamous LS1 V8 and a six-speed manual. Not only that, you can go topless in it. What better way to have a Corvette? Check it out at tflbids.com. This competes with the Audi A4 All-Road, which is about 45, well, actually $46,000 when you think about it. But there's another wagon out there that competes with this one, although not when it comes to handling or internal luxury, but it does in terms of power. And that would be the Subaru Outback XT. That one, I mean, if you get the nice one, comes in at like 42.3 or something. That's not bad at all. And that one has more storage capacity and frankly is a little higher off the ground so it can do a little bit more off-road. However, when you go through a corner, that one's a little tippy. This one is not. And that one has a CVT. This has an eight-speed automatic transmission. Now that is a question of taste and that's why I don't do styling too much when I do these reviews. And you may notice I do reviews on cars that can be considered boring for some. You might be right. This has the Thor hammer design, which I love. The front end grille design I love. I love Volvo design. I love it, love it, love it. However, not a whole lot has changed recently. There have been minor tweaks here and there with front end design, hood design, and whatnot. But because this is the ultimate version, let me show you one of the things that sets this car apart. Part of the ultimate package is these 20 inch seven spoke wheels surrounded by Pirelli P0s. They look really good, but they're really, really, really expensive. Remember I was telling you guys how wagons have a huge advantage over crossovers and SUVs with one particular thing? You're looking at it. I have friends here in Colorado. I've been in Colorado for 22 years now. And a lot of them snowboard and ski. And a lot of them own wagons, old Subarus, old Volvos, old Audis, if I can keep them running. And one of the things they all acknowledge is the fact that they can actually reach their skis or snowboard on the roof rack. Hell, even the cameraman, who's a big former snowboarder, he has a vehicle that's easy to reach his equipment, if he actually used it, on top of his vehicle. The point is, is that if you have any type of luggage, if you have a roof rack that has a cargo bin in it, if you have bikes up here, it's a hell of a lot easier to reach up there and grab it when it's something this size. 
Okay, real world zero to 60 with my camera guy in here at a mile above sea level. And I can't really find any performance mode. You can go into a manual mode, but it's actually slower that way. So I'm just gonna give her about 2000 RPM and let it rip. We'll see what happens. Here we go. It's got some pretty good urgency. 7.79, there we go, I think that's what it says. And can I tell you something? For being all the way up here at high elevation, that's actually really good. This car's design, I absolutely adore because I think the horsepower match with the car's weight and its performance around corners, it just sticks like glue, even though it's 8.1 inches off the ground which is just good enough for relatively deep snow. Ni hao, hello, how you doing? In the car I go. Now, something you should know. Because it's a wagon and it's relatively low to the ground compared to a crossover, you have to kind of fall into it, as opposed to crossovers where you just kind of scooch your butt over and you sit, which is one of the reasons I think that they're so popular. And it makes sense. Big fat guy like me, he's gonna be more comfortable not having to drop himself into a car. Now, look, beautiful interior. I love Volvo's interior design. And it's like this on all their cars. Very, very similar design here, vent design. This over here is fantastic. This is your volume control area. The stitching is beautiful. The seats are comfortable. Overall, really up there with Mercedes-Benz and BMW in terms of interior design and execution. All right, now normally we don't start down here, but I'm gonna start at the storage and work my way up. And that's because this storage, not a ton of space. You can get probably a small can of soda in here or some other stuff, but really not that big. But your USB-C is here. And I wish they had a regular USB in here as well, but this is the, the direction everybody's going. So it's kind of out of the way to really get to it. Now, look at this beautiful wood grain they have going on here. Ta-da! Really good positioning for cup holders, plus extra stuff up here. I really do like this design. Auto stop start right there, and there's your electronic parking brake. This is your start stop switch and to turn the car on you'd rotate it and to turn the car off you rotate it yep this harks back to old swedish cars back in the day that had their key down there that's a whole different story and i'm sure tommy would love to tell you all about it on tfl classics okay now this is your gear select and the reason i wanted to point this out is because not everybody's in love with this crystal design I'm still on the fence about it. I think I'd rather have a piece of metal or a piece of wood, maybe covered in leather rather than this crystal thing, but I get it. You know, it's like they're, they're trying to kind of do the whole ice thing or maybe I'm wrong. Most of these switches work with the heating air conditioning system, environmental system, if you like. And then over here, these work with the audio infotainment system. This infotainment system up here is old school Volvo. And I really, really wish that it wasn't so small. This is a nine inch screen and its design is on the old side. It just doesn't respond or react the same way that a lot of modern screens do on comparable vehicles. And one of the issues I have is the fact that I don't find that these buttons react the same way that they do or are large enough or have feedback. So that to me is a bit of an issue. All right, let's move on to the final screen here. And this is a 12.3 inch digital display. It's partially configurable. It is not as advanced as some of the other vehicle screens I've seen out there but it does tell you a few things very clear. Really, there's no reason for it to be all digital other than the fact that I think it might actually be cost savings for Volvo. Final bit I wanted to get to 
is the overall feel of all the components around here. Door handles, the leather up here, the leather up here. Oh, that is nice. Sound system is Bowers and Wilkins and it is magnificent. But once again, I wanted to point out something. The base model version of this vehicle, which has perhaps a lesser sound system, sounds really, really good as well. And perhaps to your ear, you're gonna hear the difference when you're really cranking it. But for the most part, it sounds about the same. Time for the fat guy and to get in the back seat. Yeah, yeah. All right, here we go. Now, first of all, the front seat is brought back all the way because I'm relatively tall. And I'll be honest with you, I don't think I can get my feet under the seat. Let me try this. Uh, okay, that's extremely uncomfortable. So <laughs> in order for me to be comfortable back here, I have plenty of headroom, it's all right. Legroom's not good, to be fair. So if you own a car like this, you'll be happy if you have little kids or short people. But let's say you want to heat your seats. Yes, in fact, this is a whole touch screen that's right here for your rear environmental controls. I like that and I like the vents being here, but what I don't like is that they have, oh, well, it's USB. Sorry, the USB-C. There is a ski pass through here. The seats, of course, do fold. And then, drink holders. Very nifty. But once again, I can't get my feet under the seat. Yes, I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. All right. Here's another benefit. I'm gonna pop up on Electronco. You have about 23 cubic feet of cargo space. It's just under that back here. Fold down these seats and you have over 60 cubic feet of cargo space. But you notice I'm leaning down. I'm not that tall, I'm 6'1". Very easy to get a puppy or a child or groceries up at something that comes up to this height. If you have an SUV or a crossover, most likely they're gonna be a lot higher. This is where minivans also tend to profit from the fact that they're very low to the ground. So this is somewhere in between. And for a lot of you guys, this type of utility, by the way, donut back here, thank you. I can't stand vehicles that don't do spare tires. This is the type of utility a lot of you might be looking for, but you didn't realize you were looking for it because you could do a lot with this type of space. Now the pricing, for one of these starts at about $54,000. And even at that price, it's a little bit on the steep side, especially considering the fact that an Audi A4 all road starts at 45.9. But <laughs> this has a lot of features and I'm gonna read to you some of the pricing on these features and you'll understand my problem. The paint alone is $695. The luggage cover is $345. The power operated tailgate is $200 for crying out loud, but worse, those 20 inch wheels I was talking about, $3,200. The Bowers and Wilkins premium sound system, $3,200. Destination charge, $1,095. So at the end of the day, if you got the base version of this, you'd still have the same power, which is good power, we've proven that, and it handles great but you don't have all of the goodies. And that's the one thing I really wish Volvo wouldn't do. They're starting to become kind of German when it comes to nickel and diming us, right? I mean, think about it. All of that, for that much money? Considering the fact that, <laughs> dude, this vehicle is $63,595. The Audi A6 Allroad, a larger, more powerful vehicle, is $67,900. I mean, they're within striking distance of each other. I love Volvo, but I do think that they're a little expensive when it comes to this car, but it's a brilliant little car otherwise. Thanks for joining me for the Fast Lane Car. This is Nathan. By the way, if you're thinking about super utility, yes, minivans really start at the top. Crossovers and SUVs are there, but this wagon is super utilitarian as well. So in your future wish list, think about wagons as well. Anyway. I'll see you next time. Ciao.